So on the Blaze Baba study, I just want to mention that Healing Journey Life Church McCundry for Men is literally a 29-week comprehensive Baba study aimed to help men, listen closely, aimed to help men heal from the mental, emotional, yes, emotional, and spiritual wounds that they may not even know they have. This group of men exists because men need a place to talk about their bruises, losses, plus the pressures of life as well. You don't have to pretend to be okay, settle for a mediocre walk with God, or live with unhealthy, unfulfilling relationships, but with the important people in your life. With the important people in your life. So it's a 29-week um, healing journey, man. Um, if you need any information on this, head over to live.sobwinningswithaz.org. And in the notes section, you can literally click on the link that I left there and it'll take you to the page which has all the information, how to connect, how to reach out um, to the healing journey, healing journey for men, Life Church Mukunji. And this was uh, a long time in the, in the making. I was supposed to... <laughs> I was supposed to say this so many weeks ago, uh, but amen, I put it together, I remember it today, amen. So check that out. If you're in the Allentown, Bethlehem, Eastern Area, Lehigh Valley, New Jersey, um, pretty much parts of Pennsylvania all around, listen, you could make it to this place, healing journey, men need to be healed. We are battered and bruised sometimes and we don't want to talk about it, this healing journey, this whole 20 odd week, 29 week um healing journey will be a great help to you in your life and your family. Amen. So I did it. I finally, I finally did it. I reached out and I finally made the ministry partner healing journey. Amen. So I did it. I always forgot. I forgot for like three weeks already. Amen. So shout out to Rich Tyler for um, allowing me to reach out and actually share that with my listeners and my podcast and everything like that. My beautiful life beautiful wife Luni Lopez says God is faithful yes he is so we're over 1 million listeners and listen uh, that was um, one of the promises of God so I'm expecting more because God doesn't stop at his promise he keeps on going with his promises amen so with that said listen if you're watching from YouTube God bless you Facebook God bless you on um, Twitch God bless you amen if you're listening on the podcast God bless you but listen I'm really, really going to promote live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Why? Because that's where you get the full experience. Amen? You get the full experience on live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Live chat. You get the notes. Right? You get the freebies. You get links that I can place on the social media like that. And you just get a whole lot more on live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. So this topic tonight, this one is a heavy one. This one is kind of like no joke. Because I always expose Halloween in October Amen. And I know the principalities of evil don't like to be exposed. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world, right? He came to this world, shined his bright light, and the light exposed the darkness. And people hated the light because they didn't want their dark deeds, they didn't want their sins exposed. So therefore, many people to this very day still reject the light of the world, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're calling this one Surrounded by Darkness. As believers in Christ, we have authority over all ALL principalities and powers through Jesus Christ. And we're going to read that right now in Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to take it from verse 19 all the way to verse 23. But before that, let's pray. Amen. And if you have any questions, concerns, comments, or prayer requests, listen, I'm on night watch. I'm on night watch. So I pray on um, through the night. If you reach out to me, it's happened. It's been happening. Amen. Um, late at night, I just don't, ex ex you know, I don't say the names or anything like that. Late at night through Messenger, however you want to connect with me. Um, there's been two, three, four o'clock in the morning um, sessions going on with prayer. Amen. Because I'm a prayer warrior and I'm, I'm night owl. So I might as well be useful during that time and be on night watch and the watchman on the wall, right? Praying at night uh, for your needs. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, um, jump on live that so wins with a z.org. You're going to see around the player it says prayer requests, amen, or request prayer. Click that, or all I need is your name, email address, and your request right there. It's very discreet. Uh, I'm not going to put your information out there. I respect everyone's privacy because I would like my privacy respected as well. So I really don't share people's personal information. I don't. So you could trust that and believe that. So let's pray because. When I notice that when we get into these topics, um, people, you know, they go in either direction. Either they're not 
paying attention to what's really happening in the spiritual realm or they're over like too much. They OD in on it and there needs, there needs to be a balance. And what I've learned through the years of being a Christ follower is that the balance that I have in my life is through the word of God. Amen. Doesn't let me get to this or to that. It keeps me balanced because God's word is a powerful living word and breathing word. So Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that no deeds of darkness or nothing that surrounds us by darkness will be able to penetrate the light that you have kept us in and the light that you have brought us into. Father God, I pray our healing. I pray protection. I pray sovereign will over our lives to be revealed, fulfilled in this lifetime, during this time on this earth. In Jesus' name, I pray forth arquid angels, minister angels to war against the demonic influence, the demonic culture, those things that are trying to attack our children, those things that are trying to attack the husbands and wives and their marriages, those things that are trying to attack men, those things that are trying to attack our culture, Lord God. I pray that your arquin angels, minister angels, warring angels, the host of heaven will move on behalf of your word for this community, for this nation, for our families, for our churches, for our businesses, everything that you lay your hands on, Lord God. I count it as blessed and I thank you for it all in advance. So I speak life concerning all things living and death to those things that try to take us out of here prematurely. In Jesus name, amen and amen. So let me hit this first scripture because this first scripture will set the tone, right, for the whole thing that I'm trying to do here on the blaze. Amen. Let me head over to the scripture. Okay. And here it goes. Ready? There it goes. We're going to be on Ephesians chapter 1. And we're starting at verse number, I believe that's 19. Yeah, 19. I pray that you will begin to understand the incredible greatness of his power. And I don't know why his should, that should be, anytime we speak about the Lord, that his, that bothers me. It's just me. Maybe it's just, I'm ODing. But that his should be a capital H. But anyway, because we're talking about the Lord. The incredible greatness of his power for us who believed in. Him or who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Very same spirit. Verse number 21. This is where we're to camp out. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader. I'm going to read that again. Now, he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else in this world or in the world to come. Verse 22, and God and God has put all things under the authority of Christ and he gave him this authority for the benefit of the church. No secret. Verse number 23 and the church is what? Is his body, is the Lord's body. It is filled by Christ who fills everything everywhere with his presence. That's a lot there. Amen. But that shows and proves that we have authority because God gave us the authority. God the Father gave all authority to the Son, and the Son, by way of Holy Spirit, gives the authority to us. So we're not supposed to be in fear. And what does Halloween promote the most? Fear. Fear is big business. I, I believe is second, the second highest grossing holiday in our nation, at least in the United States. First Christmas, Halloween is second. So you have a, a light and you have dark against each other. Amen. And yeah, okay, it's both pagan, Sam. Okay, and your point will be, we're not talking about pagan holidays, we're talking about evil and wickedness. And that how we have authority, because Jesus has authority over the principalities, any ruler, any authority, any principality, anything like that. In this world and the world to come, you see, Jesus is God. He has authority in this world and the world to come. We just read it. Amen. We just read it, so now we have to deal with it. Right? So let me go to the presentation I have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. I get I get like a little kid when I do the presentations because it's so, kind of so cool and the way I put it out. So here's the screen. Surrounded by darkness. Amen. Surrounded by darkness. And I know it looks a little creepy. When I was making this, my daughter was like, oh, dad, that looks creepy. Well, that's because the Halloween season is creepy. If you think about it, I know people say it's a fun you know, holiday for kids and don't take it too serious. 
Um, meanwhile, there's um, witches up in the mountain right now for like weeks upon weeks in the month of October, praying to the God of the dead and sending curses our way. Um, but I'm not supposed to take this too serious, right? Psalms chapter 5, verse 4. Psalms chapter 5, verse 4. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell with you. So it's a no-no. Evil may not dwell with God. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. And you see the background. I put that up for a purpose because when I was a kid growing up, there used to be this show called Creepy. Was it? Oh, no, Chiller. It was called Chiller. And a hand used to come out the grave, just like you see in the background. And when that hand would come out, we would get under the covers because we knew there was a scary movie about to pop off. But we used to watch it anyway because we was all about scary movies. We were all about getting scared. We were all about, you know, some other things that I'm not going to discuss right now. But we welcomed that in my home. And we welcomed it with popcorn and soda, right, and candy. And it was called Chiller Night. It used to come on TV. And it was scary, some scary movies on TV at those times. Amen? So I'm from that background. So it's not like I never watched horror movies before in my life. I used to be all about it. The one that messed me all up um, back in the 70s was Exorcist. That movie messed me up for the rest of my life. Amen. God healed me from it. But that movie, those images and the whole demonic influenced type of movie that was messed me up for a lot of years. Nightmares, right? You know, thoughts of evil and all this other stuff. That movie really messed me up. It was tied in the cult. It was tied up in wickedness. It was tied up in evil. So therefore, I don't watch those movies anymore. Um, you could invite me all you want to watch The Conjuring and all this other stuff. And I'm like, no. Why? Because I've really seen things happen according to well, how those movies per, uh, you know, project those things. Literally, i really seen those things. So, sorry. I'll pass. Um, Pastor Michael Jake says, yep, a hand with six fingers. Yeah, you remember that? It was called Chiller. Oh, did it have six fingers? Okay, I, I really didn't notice that. Amen. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it did. It was a really scary intro. And those movies were scary. It kind of like messed me up too. But I grew up watching that. So I had to deal with all those images. All those images that were in my mind at that time. Uh, let's go back to the presentation. And I got more for you. Amen. Sorry, that's not it. Here we go. And let's go back here. And right here, we know. You ever had a nightmare? I have. But Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, you see that hand, right? That's from things outside of our realm. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness. What present darkness? The darkness, if you don't know about the darkness we're facing right now, um, we're going to have to pray for your eyes to be open, your eyes to be open, because there is a present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in where? In the heavenly places. So therefore, there's something outside of our realm, in the natural realm, which makes it the supernatural realm. And the Lord has been telling us about this. And Apostle Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to let us know we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. So it's not against vampires. It's not against Dracula. It's not against this and that, mummies and all this other stuff. It's not against zombies. It's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness against the spiritual forces of what? Of good? No, of evil. That's where we're wrestling against, of evil in the heavenly places. So people say again, Sam, you're taking this too too literal. You can't you can't take this too literal. I'm taking it the way the Lord wants me to take it, and I'm taking it to the place where the Lord wants me to take it. Amen. It's not too literal, it's not literal enough, it's not figurative. No, God's talking about the supernatural realm. And during Halloween, during these dark seasons, during this dark time, amen, everybody's pretty much, I don't know if you noticed, but everybody pretty much is hiding. Now, I'm not going to say that Christians should be hiding out on Halloween in fear and not be, you know, oh, we can't, you know, get ourselves dirty with that evil. Listen, that's a great time for evangelism. People are knocking on your door on Halloween, asking for treats, right? And that's a good time to spread the gospel. Sounds weird, but a lot of people use Halloween as a big evangelistic tool. Now, my my daughter hasn't pressured me yet, or my or my wife about you know wearing costumes or anything like that. She's not really that much into it. 
Um, but pretty soon, maybe not. Maybe, you know, she'll bypass the whole costume thing. Um, but if it does come up, you know, we'll explain our piece on it. Um, but if she wants to uh, engage in putting on costumes, whatever, um, I'm okay with it as long as it doesn't get crazy. I'm not going to endorse it. I'm not going to promote it. But I'm not going to force her not to put on a costume. If she wants to put on a costume, she could put on a costume. But we're not celebrating Halloween. And we're not going to change the name, call it Harvest or whatever. I want to tell her what I know about the supernatural realm. Not too much because I don't want to put fear in her. Because God didn't give us a spirit of fear. But of a sound mind and courage and strength and all that. But a lot of parents get pressured by their children. And they say, look mom, look dad. Everybody else is doing it. Why can't we go to the horror show? Why can't we go to the haunted mansion? Why can't we will not be doing none of that haunted mansion stuff. We won't be going to our local amusement parks and celebrating Halloween and all that. Um, there's a like I would say there's like... A large percentage of Christians all up in those haunted houses and everything like that. Now they have to deal with spirits um, that are foreign, right? Shouldn't be we shouldn't be uh, engaging with those type of spirits. We shouldn't be how you call it appeasing spirits, and we shouldn't be giving letting them get into like we're, we shouldn't be inviting evil into our lives. And people say, oh no, it's just fun and games. Really? What's so what's so fun and games about gore and um, mutilation and blood and you know sacrifices and witches and warlocks and evil spells and, and horror movies? What's so friendly about that? And what's so harmless about that? I know Hollywood has, you know, did a number and you know promoted it and you know, fear is like I said, it's big business. Hollywood has done a, a great job, you know what I mean, on doing that. But um last time I checked as Christians, we we shouldn't be getting getting with that stuff. I don't think we should at all. And I'm not gonna even make an excuse of why we should, other than evangelism. Now if you want to open your home Put something in front like a pumpkin or whatever to let the trick-or-treaters know that your door is open for them to get treats. And when they come to your door, listen, they're in your territory now, right? They're in your house now. You could give them a track. You could bless them in the name of Jesus. Explain to them, you know, to be careful. Explain to them the gospel or why we don't walk in the dark. We walk in the light. However you want to do it Um, because they're at your door now. So, and it's your domain. So, you could use it as a big evangelistic tool. I've seen people do it. It works. Um, Way of the Master. They got excellent tracks on Halloween time <clears throat> that you could buy by bulk. They're like very cheap. Buy by bulk and give them out to the kids. I've done it years and years ago. And, you know, it, they're effective. They make people think. A lot. You'll see a lot of the tracks on the floor after a while. But if you stuff the track in the candy bag, amen, and they might not notice it's there until they get home and they'll have a time to read it. And you never know what that... What that track could do to a young kid. It could steer them in the right direction. It could get them out of witchcraft. It could get them out of Santaria. It could get them out of a generational curse. Because the word of God is the truth. And the way and the life. And expresses love, grace and mercy and the power. But there's light and darkness. I hope you know that. Like we're we're in a time that it gets dark. In our nation it gets dark. There's so many issues right now going on. And things that are in the dark. Deeds of darkness. I spoke about that last time. But there's a lot of things happening in the spiritual realm. Even right now, there's a fight for somebody's soul right now. Oh, don't listen to that guy. That guy's talking a bunch of lies and gibberish and foolishness and this, that, and the third. Listen, I'm not into foolishness. I'm into the righteousness of God. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, we rule, we reign, and we speak truth. And I rely on the word of God for everything, pretty much. Like There's nothing that the word of God cannot offer me that is good. Everything the word of God offers me is good. And if I wanted to be a person that just wants to extract certain scriptures and make up my own, you know, reality and make a like a gimmick or whatever, I could do that too. But I won't do it because I'm not a gimmicky person. Never been, never will be. Amen. And by the grace of God, I don't go down that road. I've seen a lot of preachers and evangelists go down that road because the word of God is so powerful. You could take a scripture and run your whole life and run a whole ministry on one scripture. Especially when it's, there's evidence of that scripture working in your life. But we're not about that because that turns into witchcraft. You heard me? That will turn into witchcraft. That will be manipulation. Manipulation is a form of witchcraft. And it happens at church sometimes. Churches with a capital C. Before somebody says, oh, you heard what he said about his church? I'm not talking about my church. I'm talking about the church. The, the church. Capital C. The church. 
So, and a lot of times it happens. And when you see it on TV sometimes, you know, um, buy this holy water, um, um, get this oil, and do this, do that, and the third. And then you notice, like, you look at the program, like, that looks like witchcraft. It looks like, oh, I have to get this oil, and I have to spread it in the way that pre- preacher or that pastor or that evangelist is saying. And if I don't say it that way, then there's no power in it. That's manipulation. That's a form of witchcraft. Yeah, you could use the word to prove anything you want to prove pretty much. But is God telling us to use his word to manipulate or is God telling us to use his word, apply the word and move with the word and make disciples all around the world and nation and help people out of their darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ? Which one is it? Because there's a there's a war going on between the dark principalities, authorities, rulers that are in the supernatural realm and the light. That shines in every single believer here on this side of eternity. The hope of glory, which is inside of every single believer, male or female. We have the Holy Spirit God, Holy Spirit God, He, the Holy Spirit in us. And we have the hope of glory. Amen. And we have a bright shining light in us that really exposes all darkness. You've, you, It happened to you, right? You've been in the elevator before. And a lot of people are in there and then somebody will look at you like there's something different about you. You're not even saying a word or you've been in a public um, spot or a movie theater or something. And you're not even saying nothing. And people will say there's something different about you because of the light of Christ. Nothing that we're doing, nothing that we're making up. And it's not nothing we're forcing is who we are. I identify with the Lord Jesus Christ and I attend a church. But my identity found, is found in Christ. Amen. So it's God first, my wife, my children, my family. And ministry in that order. And I'm not going to change it up because I believe that's the order that God wants it to be as God first, right? My wife, children, family, and ministry in that order. Amen. So I don't get put ministry on top of, you know, God. Some people even put their ministry on top of God if that's at all possible. It's called being, um, it's called idolizing, creating an idol, creating anything that you put before God becomes an idol. And God is not happy with idols. You know, idol worship is not, it's a big no-no. It's another form of witchcraft. Have you ever seen people pray to statues? Have you ever seen people pray to statues? You heard what I said. Listen, there was a time in my life that um, I've seen it so many times done. And when I got into youth ministry, um, one of our students was under three demonic, three demons, the Lord revealed it to me. I know you, you think I'm, I'm all like a demon hunter or something like that. He just revealed it to me. I was new in the faith. He revealed this and I recognized they were called familiar spirits. And then I said, so Lord, what do you want me to do? He says, go break all those idols in the in the lobby, in the, in the, in the first floor of that building. So you know what I did, right? I went, I smashed all those statues. I'm incriminating myself now, but nobody knows what I'm talking about, where I'm talking about. But a lot of people woke up with... Um, so the Mother Mary and all these San Lazaro and all these other statues all broken up in the hallway um, because those were idols and they were carrying demonic things and they were used for demonic purposes and uh, you know all that so I cast that out broke that cast out three demons but the problem was is that I was so new in my faith that I didn't realize that I cleaned up the house was clean um, and this young lady's soul was pretty much free from these demons, but she didn't realize or I didn't know how to explain that she needed to fill herself up with the word of God, with the spirit of God, so that way when those demons looked at her again, um, they will not be able to return. But they, guess what happened? Like the scripture says, they came, they looked, it was a clean home, clean house, but it was empty, vacant, like there was vacancy. There was, um, it was room in there, so they brought seven more, even stronger. And that young lady went down a path of you know whatever that path was it was opposite of what she knew to do she was doing the opposite and i believe that was the demonic influence over her life um and we continue to pray for all the people that come came across our ministry and on the youth and everything there young adults now they had their own families amen a lot of them are still uh, engaging or they're they're kind of trying to appease these spirits, these demons, and they're calling it something like angels. They're calling it whatever. Because remember, an, uh, a demon, the devil himself, could disguise himself as an angel of light. It's in the scriptures. You got to read it for yourself. Amen. My wife says, I'm so blessed that God chose me to be married to you. <laughs> okay, babe. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be married to you. Amen. You're the best wife, wife I ever had. <laughs> 
<laughs> she was like, yeah, right. You're the only one. Yeah. One and only. That's right. She has a perfect name, Uni, the one and only. So, so we live in a culture that's influenced and we're surrounded by darkness. But as Christ followers, that's why we're called out a lot. Uh, people call us zealots. They call us religious people. They call us um, haters that we, we carry a hate speech. They call us narrow minded. They call us, man, they call us all kind of names. And we, in return, we're going to bless, we're going to love, we're going to provide hope, we're going to reach out, we're going to pray for our enemies, we're going to feed our enemies, give our enemies something to drink in the Lord Jesus' name, amen? But we're going to come against the principalities, the authorities, the evil and the wickedness of the demonic realm, we're going to come against that by the power and authority that Jesus Christ gave us, and we're going to come in the form of the light of the world and the salt of this earth. Why? Because that's what Jesus said we are. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go, take dominion, amen? He said, in this world you have tribulation, this is the Lord Jesus saying, in this world you will have trouble and tribulation, but be of good cheer. Sounds weird, right? Why am I going to be cheerful about tribulation and trouble in this world? But he said, be of great cheer because I've come and overcome this world system. But already, he already took care, he already handled it. We are walking in what God has already done, amen? So we are catching up to the future, if that makes any sense. We're catching up to what already has been done because Jesus is the great I am. He's the great I am, the God who always is, the, always, the God who always has been, the God who there is not a time that he never will be and there was never a time that he was never that he was never there. He always has been, always will be, amen. And the Bible, we read it in the scriptures that he is the ruler of this world here, right? Has authority over this world here and the world to come. Why? Because in Revelation, Jesus is coming with the new heavens and the new earth. So what more proof and evidence do we need that Jesus is claiming to be exactly God who he said he is? Otherwise, they would not crucify him or he would not lay down his life. Amen. Nobody took his life. He laid down his life. But the Jews knew exactly what he was talking about. Now, there was a, a form of darkness, amen, even on the cross. Remember, there was darkness that fell over the earth, earthquake, darkness. What, what do you think that darkness was? It wasn't something good. It had to do with evil and wickedness. Amen? And Halloween and, and celebrations of occults and, and witchcraft and santeria and all kind of um, voodoo and all that stuff. That, those are deeds of darkness and they will bring darkness. And if you're engaging in the Ouija board and seances and all this other stuff, calling up the dead. If you go to psychics, soothsayers and all that stuff, listen, stop it. Because you are you you are trying to get into something that you don't want a part of. You don't want none of that smoke in your life. Trust me. Trust me. I know. And I thank God he delivered me from all of that. Got me out of that situation. Because it's not a good thing. Amen. I was trying to reach out to some people who have great testimonies of how God took them and delivered them out of witchcraft. And they are born again Christians. And they have the light now, and they are in the light, and they expose darkness as well, and they know a little something, something. So I'm waiting for some people to get in contact with me. If not, amen, I'll just do the webinar on my own because I know some things myself, amen. But I would like to always have like a guest that has their own experience. So if you know someone who has experience in witchcraft and the occult, and God has transformed their lives, amen, you let them know about live.someonswithz.org. Let them know about Brother DJ Sam Rock, Sam Lopez. Let them know about, let's connect. Amen. I would like to have them on um, this podcast because it would really help a lot of people understand that I'm not the only one that's talking about these things. And people are having experience with the occult, with supernatural things and supernatural realms that they were like, yeah, it's true. It's real. It has power. But when they had an encounter with God, the living God, they said that's a greater power. God is a greater power. Amen. He's a God of light, not of darkness. A God of light, not of darkness. Let me go back to my last point here in the in the presentation, right? I like to go up presentation. So let's go back here. Let me see if I can get back. So we read here. Let me go back here. Uh, we read in Ephesians 6, 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. But I don't want to leave it like that. That's too gory, right? Uh, we have authority, yeah, but I want to leave you with this. This is what I want to leave you with. The light. Because I'm not going to keep nobody in no darkness. 
This is not a, a horror Bible study. This is not a Bible study about darkness. This is a Bible study really about light, the light of Christ. And the Bible is clear. And when it says, you are the light of the world, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. I think this is in the book of Matthew. Excuse me, I haven't put the, the reference. Matthew chapter 5, I believe. You'll find it in there. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do you do people light a lamp, right? And put it under a basket, but on a stand. And it gives light to all in the house. It gives light to all in the house. No matter where you're coming from, you're going to bring the light to all the house. Amen? So that's that's an amazing thing. Amen? And I have to put the reference. I'll put that um in the in the live chat in a little bit. I believe it was Matthew chapter five in that area around there. You may forgive me. I was excited when I saw that verse. I knew where it was. Obviously I copied and pasted it on there and then I forgot to put the reference. So my bad. Amen. So we have a little bit over three minutes left. Listen again, thank you so much for coming through to the Blaze Bible study. I try to do these Mondays, Tuesdays and Thursdays, ten PM Eastern Standard Time. And I'm so happy that we made it over one million Listeners, that's an incredible thing. I have to do something, amen, for the listeners. I have to show them that I'm so grateful for going over there. It's a 24-7 radio network, so it's mostly music being played, amen. And shout out to the Philippines. They're, they're the ones that are like blowing the numbers up. So shout out to all my Filipino brothers and sisters, amen, the people who listen. And when you do a Google Earth, because you can see the locations. When you, when I did a Google Earth, you can see that there are a lot of restaurants, right, that are, are listening. There's a lot of businesses, schools, organizations in um, Manila and all those cities in the Philippines. And I'm like, wow, okay. You know, shout out to everyone out there. And they have a time zone, like, I think it's 12 hours different. I think it's a 12-hour difference. So when we're doing something here at 10 p.m., they're in the 10 a.m. hour. So, so when I'm doing my morning Devo... They're in the nighttime. When I'm doing my blaze, they're in the morning time. So they have an opposite time zone. But thank God for technology that they could listen to the podcast in their own time zone whenever they feel up to it. So if they want to listen to a morning Devo, they're going to wait for their time slot and go to my podcast and play the morning Devo and vice versa for the nighttime Bible studies. So I'm on night watch tonight. So if you have any prayer requests, I'll be up. I'm a night owl, man. I'll be up. So if you have any prayer requests, you can slide over to live.soulwinningswithaz.org, right? And there's a place, a button that you could ask for prayer. Request prayer and just click it. I only need your name, email address, and your prayer request. Amen. And also, uh, all over social media, I put out some things of different ways you can reach out to me for a prayer. Amen. This is time to pray. Right now, I'm telling you, 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 you think I'm exaggerating right now, there's witches in the mountain. And they're praying to the God of the dead. Whatever that amounts to, whatever power they're going to conjure up, whatever. They, but they're not coming to play. They're coming back to, you know, send curses out and try to conjure up the dead. They're trying to speak to the dead realm. And yeah, they're going to get some communication. They're going to be communicating with demons. And they're going to be communicating with deceiving demons and evil spirits, demonic influence, all that. So we need to be praying for them witches and warlock to break that curse over their lives. Amen. And God forbid they try to send something to a, a to a family that's um, in God um, that's going to be so bad for them. So we, they don't want the smoke. We don't want the smoke. We don't want no problems, right? So they need to leave that alone. And they need to come out of that darkness into God's wonderful, marvelous light. He did it for me. Amen. He could do it for you. I truly believe that if God could change my life, he could change anybody's life. And take you from whatever place you are right now. God will go to where you are to take you to where he is. That's the gospel message real quick in one spot, in one place. So I'm out of here. Um, Man, it's been one of those type of episodes that I just want to run around on the house a little bit. Because I know for sure this freed somebody up. I felt it in the spirit that somebody got broken out of demonic influence tonight. Amen. And whenever somebody watches this as a replay, if I put this up as a replay, they're going to have the same similar or the same experience when it comes to the breaking of spiritual and ancestral curses over their lives. So God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember that God is good. Amen. And God never will leave you out of his will. Just go to him. He's ready for you. He's ready to embrace you. Amen. So it's coming out of that darkness and coming to the marvelous light. Surrounded by darkness, come into the light, please.